Hi everyone, I'm GKCS. We are talking about the Fibonacci sequence today. So uh, if you don't know what the Fibonacci sequence is, you should have a look in the description below. There's a link. And this is the equation for the Fibonacci sequence and this is the base condition that we have. For 1 and 0, they are equal to 1. So taking an example, what is f of 2 then? That's f of 1 plus f of 0, that will be equal to 2. And so on and so forth. Now what we will try to do is take f of n and go as far back as possible to the smallest terms that we can. Okay, so f of n is f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2. f of n minus 1 is f of n minus 2 plus f of n minus 3. And all the way down you come to f of 2, which has two base conditions of f of 1 and f of 0. Now, at this point you know what the answer is. So what you can say is that any term of the Fibonacci sequence can be represented using these two terms and some subsequent operations here. That's an important thing to understand. So what we are going to do is represent any given term as these two terms. We will try and do that. So let's try that. Coming here, you see that this is a sum of products. Okay, It looks like a sum, but a sum of products of 1 into f of n minus 1 plus 1 into f of n minus 2. Yeah, this part is very simple, but it's a big insight because what we can do now is represent this as a vector multiplication a matrix multiplication actually so this is the row that we have and this is the column that we are multiplying it with even now this operation is really trivial but what's going to happen is we are going to understand how this will change the entire way that we look at Fibonacci numbers okay, f of n is a multiplication of two matrices one of which has 1, 1, and the other one has terms of the Fibonacci sequence from previously. So let's take some examples. Let's take the first three terms of the Fibonacci sequence. That's f of n minus, no, it's not n anymore, so that's f of 2 is equal to, well, that is equal to 1 into 1. This matrix f of 1 and f of 0. So that's f of 2. What is f of 3? That's equal to 1 into 1. f of 1 will come down. But f of 2 should come here. So rather we can just substitute this. So that is 1, 1 in this tiny matrix that I'm drawing. But it's not important. We are actually not going to be calculating these terms. Okay, that's. That's another thing. What about f of 4? This is 1, 1 into f of 3 and f of 2 are the two terms which should come. So I'm going to take f of 3 here. And this big, big equation is actually going to come out. 1, 1, f of 1, f of 0. That completes the first term. In fact, it still doesn't. So there's, there's this term down. Now that completes the first term and we have f of 2 below, which is this term. This entire thing is just f of 4. But there is something important to notice. Look at these terms. f of 0, f of 1, f of 1, f of 0, f of 1. And you don't see any other terms here. You just see the two base conditions here. So what this gives us is an idea that any Fibonacci number can be represented using the base conditions. But our math is still not good enough. We have taken a vector and tried to multiply that with another vector. So these two are matrices, but we have a 1 cross 2 matrix and the other one being a 2 cross 1 matrix. A little more hard work probably is going to give us this idea that f of n is nothing but just taking another term, f of n minus 1 below this being the matrix that we want. And to get that, this part makes sense. f of n, to get f of n, we just multiply this row with this column. Right, that makes sense. What row do you need to multiply with this column to get this term, f of n minus 1? Hmm. To get f of n minus 1, we need just this term. So that could be set to 1. And we could ignore this term, so that could be set to 0. And look at that. This row, when multiplied with this column, is going to give you just f of n minus 1, which is what you need here. 
Why did we do this? Because the math is going to simplify over here. Right. How is it going to simplify? Look at this vector. Can you find out its multiplication value with this vector or this vector before you actually calculate these terms? No. Right. So whenever we have the base conditions with us, we need to multiply them with this vector to go to the next step, which is basically defeating the purpose of doing all this math. Because if you're going and multiplying it with this vector, then that's an order and operation. Wow. And you had a better algorithm for that. Right, so this, this did nothing apart from give us the insight that every term can be represented using the base conditions. But this matrix representation is actually going to be making our algorithm very fast. How? Well, this matrix is a 2 cross 2 matrix. Meaning that you can take this matrix and multiply it with itself. That's the biggest insight. So earlier we had a vector of what? 1 cross 2? 1 cross 2 cannot be multiplied with 1 cross 2 matrices. Okay, the number of columns here has to be equal to the number of rows of the second matrix. So this would not work. So whenever we were trying to actually put them together, the vectors together here, that wouldn't work because you would first need to multiply this with this and before that this with this and so on and so forth. So that would take too much time. But here, a 2 cross 2 matrix can be multiplied by itself. So now what we can do is take f of 2 and f of 1 as a column matrix and then represent that as a multiplication of two matrices. Okay, so this is our first equation. And the second equation wants to find out f of 3. According to our equation, we also keep f of 2 and multiply these two matrices. But have a look at this matrix. This one can be substituted from the first equation. Let's do that. We get f of 3 and f of 2 as a column matrix being equivalent to 1, 1, 1, 0. And substituting, we get 1, 1, 1, 0. And f of 1 f of 0 being the column matrix. Here's the thing. You take these two matrices and you can multiply them. Okay, they are no longer, I mean, they are 2 cross 2 matrices. So the number of rows and columns are the same for these two guys. That gives us a 1, 1, 1, 0 squared. So this matrix has been squared. And then we get f of 1, f of 0. And in general, for the number f of n, and f of n minus 1 being the column, you need n minus 1 as a power of this matrix into f of 1, f of 0. Okay, so that's how we can find the nth Fibonacci number using just these two terms. That is still a problem though. We need to raise this to a power of n minus 1. In the brute force way, of course, if we do this, it's going to take us order n time. As bad as earlier. But we can do much, much better. So if you haven't seen the tutorial for fast exponentiation, you should. What we are going to do here is called binary exponentiation. So that is a little bit of, uh, that's the only part where there's actually dynamic programming here. But you could look at fast exponentiation. It has log n time, uh, you know, time complexity. So that's as good as this one, but we are learning something new this time. Let's do that. So binary exponentiation uses two main properties. The first one being that any number can be represented using powers of 2 or powers of 3 or powers of 4 actually uh, as long as you have a good base system to play with. So decimal uses powers of 10 to represent any number but you can represent any decimal number as binary also using powers of 2. That's one important thing to know. And the second thing is any number raised to the power x is equal to a raised to the power p into a raised to the power q into a raised to the power r where x is equal to p plus q plus r, plus so on and so forth. So there's other exponents you can add here. So what we do is very clever. We take a number like 12, having an exponent, let's say 84, and we break this exponent into powers of 2. So that is 12 raised to power, what should be 1, 2, 4? Well, we take the maximum power that we can from here, so 64. 12 raised to power 64, that's, that's nice into, this is what we are doing, right? We are going in the RHS. So now again, we have to multiply by 12 because this is not equal to this. 20 is the power remaining. 
We want to take the maximum power from that, so that is 16. 4 is the power remaining, which is itself a power of 2, so that is 12 raised to the power 4. Now what does this give us? 3 terms, and we have this number. Why do we take this number and break it into 3 terms at all? Because, to calculate 12 raised to the power 4, is like calculating 12 raised to the power 2 into 12 raised to the power 2. Which in turn, 12 raised to the power 2 can be calculated using 12 into 12. Now, 12 raised to the power 16, the same thing can be done here. 12 raised to the power 16 is like calculating 12 raised to the power 8 into 12 raised to the power 8. That in turn can be done using 12 raised to the power 4 into 12 raised to the power 4, which you have already calculated here. So this and this are the same. Now, of course, you're seeing that there's a lot of common stuff happening here. And this is nothing but a recursive equation, where your function is nothing but multiplying the two results. And once this is calculated, you don't need to calculate this again. Right? This is where the dynamic programming comes in. It's a very simple way to do the dynamic program programming here, because uh, it, it's a very common and intuitive way. And you don't need to think of many results, but let's start off simple. And what's happening is you're taking the two results that you have, multiplying them, and making bigger and bigger powers of two using that. And now because we know that any number can be represented as powers of two, we can find a number a raised to power any number. Okay, as long as you have all the powers of two of a. So that's the strategy. Now for Fibonacci numbers, how is this going to help us? We are going to do the same thing, okay, the same logic of binary exponentiation using matrices. So instead of having a simple number here, we are going to be having an entire matrix here. The matrix. Is this going to work on matrix exponentiation also, the same logic? Yes, it will. Because matrices are, I mean, when you multiply them, they are associative. So it works. As an example, f of 14 is equal to this matrix that we found, raised to power 13, and the two base conditions as a column. So, this is the core of the problem, right? Let's do my exponentiation on that. But before doing that, of course, we need to keep all the powers of 2 stored with us for this matrix. So, the first power of 2 we can think of is 1. Okay, 2 raised to power 0 gives you 1. So, that's also a power of 2. 2 raised to power 1 gives you a power of 2 gives you the result of 2, 2 raised to power 2 gives you 4, and so on and so forth. So these are the powers we need to store. This matrix, raised to power 1, what does that give you? Well, it gives you the matrix itself. Okay, so this will be stored at index 0 in our storage array. At index 1, we need this power, which is 2. So that is this matrix squared. How do we find that? We multiply this matrix with itself. So that's going to give us a result. And we're going to calculate that on the spot. So this is multiplied by itself. So that is 1 plus 1. This is 2. And the second column will be 1. The next row, so that is uh, 1 here. And 1, 0, so that is again 1 here. So this is the second entry you have, which represents power of 2. This is 1. Now 4 has to come in. So this matrix raised to power 4 will come in immediately now, which is this row with this column gives you 4 and 1. So that is 5. This looks like a Fibonacci term, by the way. And that makes sense. So 5 with the next is going to give you 3. This one with this gives you 3 again. And finally this gives you 2. So this matrix is to the power 4 gives you this matrix, 5, 3, 3, 2. And let's take one final entry. I think that should do it. Yeah, 8. Should do it. So 5, five 3 multiplied with these two is going to give you 25 plus 9, which is 34. God, I hope I'm right. Uh, what else? Well, 15 plus 10. So that is 25. Now these two multiply with this. So that is uh, 6 plus 15, which is 21. 
and this with this. So that is 9 plus 4. So that is 13. Okay. In fact, this is 21 because this matrix has to be symmetrical. And now what we'll do is represent 13 as powers of 2. So that is 13 is equal to 8 plus 4 plus 1. Now if you look at the binary representation of 13, that is 1, 1, 0, 1. This makes sense because had this been set to 1, you would have had a plus 2 here. Okay, uh, you are representing 13 as powers of 2 and that's why in the binary representation every bit which is set means that a, a number of that power, 2 raised to that power has to be added to get this number. So basically what we want is if the binary bit and that index is set, so this is index is 3, 2, 1 and 0. So if the binary bit at that index is set for the exponent, that means that the matrix has to be raised to that power. So you take the power of the matrix at that position, okay, uh, at 8. So of course in an array this will be 0, 1, 2 and 3. So at 3 is the bit set for 13, yes. So you need this power. Let's do that. Let's uh, take that as 34, 21, 21, and 13. I'll just write that a little neatly. Yeah, this is one of the powers you need. What else? At 2, is 13 having its bit set? Yes. So this index is also needed. Let's go there. Let's pick that up. 5, 3, 3, 2. This is also needed. What else? At 1 is the bit set? No. So do you need this power to raise your matrix to 13? No, you don't. 1 is not required, so we ignore that. What's the next thing? Well, at index 0, it is set. So we pick this up. 1, 1, 1, 0. Now, these three powers are required to raise our matrix to 13. So what we do is we just multiply these three matrices. Because that's the uh, thing about exponents. Like we multiply them, then the exponents get added, right? So, yeah, this multiplication is going to get pretty complicated. Uh, I'll just fast forward to the result here. So that gives us the final result of three seven seven, two three three, two three three, and one four four. Okay, but this is not the end of it. Of course, there's a small procedure remaining. F of one and f of zero have to be multiplied with it. Both of them are equal to one and one. So it's basically taking this row and multiplying with 1 and 1, so that will be the sum of these two terms, which is 610. And this is equal to, the second row is equal to 377. Okay, remember that this is equal to f of 14 and f of 13. And so what we have done is find the nth term, the 14th term of the Fibonacci sequence in log n time. How is that? Because uh, when you're taking that term, you know, when you're taking this matrix and raising it to a particular power, so whatever that power is, that will be order n power. And to get to this power, you need just log n operations because to represent this n, you need log n bits. So that's why the order complexity, order time complexity is log n. Okay, of course, we are assuming that uh, matrices can be multiplied in order one time. But the thing is, this is a 2 cross 2 matrix. To multiply it with another 2 plus 2 matrix takes uh, very few computations. So that is order 1. It's constant. So that's the reason why you have order log n time. So what we have done is find the nth Fibonacci number in just log n time. And using binary exponentiation, which in turn uses dynamic programming. Now, where did the dynamic programming part come in? Well, it was so obvious that we might have missed it. So I'll just state it. 2 raised to power x, when we are finding this out, what we are doing is 2 raised to the power x by 2 into 2 raised to the power x by 2. Now, we don't want to calculate this again if we have already calculated this part. That was the dynamic programming. It was recursive. It had no cycles. Uh, if you solve for this part optimally, then you are guaranteed that the overall solution is also optimal. And of course, uh, there was optimal substructure and overlapping subproblems. So if you solve this, then this part is also done. That's it. That's how simple dynamic programming can be. Of course, it will get complicated later on, but uh, you see that even with simple dynamic programming, the power of it takes order in time algorithms 
to order in, order log in time algorithms. And the next few videos will also be on dynamic programming. So if you have any good suggestions for DP problems, please put them in the comments. Uh, if you have any doubts regarding this problem, of course you can put them in the comments and I'll be sharing the link for the code in the description. So until next time, see you.